Good morning. I'm Bob Hancock, co-lay leader of the group here at Preston Cemetery United Methodist Church. It is a gloriously beautiful morning today. It's hard to believe we're in the middle of winter. Another glorious day to be alive. Eversource has flexible payment plans that can help. More information at Eversource.com. Paid for by shareholders. Good morning, I think. <laughs> Welcome, one and all, here to worship this morning in the sanctuary at First and Summerfield United Methodist Church. And hello, friends out there online. It's good to be back here, and I'm glad that everyone is out there as well. The, today is going to be uh, the remembrance of Jesus' baptism, as it is the first Sunday after Epiphany every year, and we will share in the renewal of our baptismal vows. So if you folks at home want to have some water handy uh, for later in the service, that means that you all, we all could participate together one way or the other. So let's join now in our call to worship, and Drew will lead us. Those who are able, please rise. Claimed and named by God. We are God's beloved children. Called to follow Christ. Guided and strengthened by the Spirit. Praise God for the priceless gift of baptism. We will remember and give thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. Amen. Would you please be seated and join along with me in the prayer of confession that's printed in your bulletin. Holy One, we praise you for walking with us through deep waters and dark valleys, 
and bringing us safely home. You have called us by name and claimed us as your own. You have shined your light upon us and asked that we let our light shine for others to see. Yet we continue to hide that light, focusing on our own problems, our own needs, our own desires. We refuse the inheritance that you have prepared for the baptized and insist on finding our way alone. Pour your baptismal waters over us again, gracious God, and cleanse us from our self-pity and arrogance. Wash away our jealousy, greed, and the negative thoughts and behaviors that stand in the way of being the people you have called us to be. Amen. Let's bring our prayers to God in silence. The love of God is offered to us freely, joyfully, for all eternity. Take heart, dear friends. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Praise God for the love that has claimed us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading is to be offered by Reverend Taryn Lepke. Are you out there online this morning, Taryn? I didn't see his name on the list. Yes. Great. Wonderful. Go for it. <laughs> the uh, Hebrew scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, says the Lord, the one who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, because you are precious in my eyes. You are honored, and I love you. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring the offspring. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created. The word of the Lord. All right. Well, would all of our young people come forward, Nathaniel? <laughs> And join me up front. <laughs> Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning, Nathaniel. Happy New Year. Thank you. Did you have a really good Christmas? And all your time off and stuff did you have a lot of fun excellent i'm glad to hear that i love your sweatshirt that you have on this morning trust me what does the bottom say i'm a superhero 
Yeah. I, are you a superhero? No. Well, you're a super kid. I can tell that already. That's for sure. And who, who uh, you have on there? Is that the Hulk? Yeah. Captain America? And Iron Man. Oh, wow. That's a holy trinity right there. That's of superheroes. That's great. I'm so glad. And I love your your leopard skin <laughs> sneakers too. Huh? I don't think I understand. I don't understand that one. Jaguar? Jaguar. Oh, it's Jaguar, not leopard, Pastor Red. Come on. Get the cat straight. All right. Well, it's so wonderful to be together, even if it's just the two of us. Now, I'm going to ask you a really, really difficult question. Are you ready? What am I holding in my hands? What's in this bowl? Such a smart young man you are. That's right. It is water. Now, think about water for a second. What kinds of things do we do with water? We drink it, right? What else do we do with it? We use it to put out fires. Oh, there's a future fireman right there. Okay. Anything else that you can think of? What do you do with your hand? You wash, right? You ever take a bath or a shower? Yeah. You just had to have one today. Excellent. <laughs> Whatever. Well, I had a shower today too, so we're in good shape. When I was your age, my mom and dad always made me have a bathtub on Saturday night before church on Sunday morning. So that was my probably my weekly bathtub right there. <laughs> oh, we could do all and um, you have any? Uh, it's not exactly the right time of the year, but do you have any like plants or flowers at home? You ever put water on those? Like these are beautiful what we call poinsettia plants that we have around this time of the year. And we have to we have to put what people are putting water on. Why do we put water on the plants? To keep them healthy and to help them grow. That's exactly right. Yay! <laughs> so we use water for all sorts of things that really help us. We couldn't live without water, could we? Now we need we need water every day for one way or another. So water is very important here at church too, for all the reasons we talked about, but also for something that we do and we remember when uh, people come into the church, when they become members of the church, we do water, we put water, we sprinkle water on them, and it's called baptism. And we do that because we remember every year at this day that when Jesus was not a little baby, but was a grown man, he went down to a river called the Jordan River, and his cousin, John the Baptist, baptized him. But not with a bowl like this, but he actually went in the river, walked into the river, and John went whoosh, and Jesus went all the way down under, and then came back up again. You talk about getting clean. That was really some way to do it. But the baptism means that it's, it's this water represents God's love and how God's love is like the water. It washes over us and makes us clean. It, we can drink God's love in and it helps us to feel our, uh, our thirst is quenched and we can grow. All these good things that God does for us, we may not see God's water because God's water is invisible and we can't always feel it. It's this beautiful Thing that surrounds us, but it helps us to always remember that God loves us no matter where we go, no matter what we do, and if we do some wrong things and, you know, we need to get cleaned up a little bit, spiritually speaking, we can go back to the water and get all cleaned up again. So water is a really important thing. You know one other thing I thought of that water is used for? Uh, ice. We put ice in water, right, to make it cool. Have you... Uh, done any ice skating yet this time of the year is a good time maybe when you grow up you will do some maybe you go skiing well that's kind of frozen water too right snow yeah so we use it for all sorts of good things and 
the love of God is like that. All around us, it makes us cool when we're hot. It gives us beautiful feelings when we drink the water in to our hearts. And it makes us feel like God is really close to us at all times. So let's remember how much we may not be in church, but God is always with us no matter where we go. And God's love is surrounding us always. So I'm going to do one little thing here. Now, get ready. Close your eyes. Ready? Boop. You get done? Boop. Okay. Boop. All right. <laughs> that is like God's love showering over you. Always. Pastor Ed, too. And we're going to do that with the rest of the congregation. Later. So let's have a little prayer together, okay? We thank you, God, for the way your love surrounds us at all times, just like you send water to shower upon the earth and bring forth life. You send your spirit upon us, showering your love upon us to bring forth your life always. Thank you, God, for your love that we know in Jesus. Amen. Okay, you have a good time downstairs in Sunday school, and you keep those adults in line now, okay? All right. See you later, buddy. Our gospel reading, if everyone can hear me, is uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, the baptism of Jesus. Then Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized by John at the Jordan River. John tried to stop him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Here ends the reading of the gospel. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. So family was driving home from church following the baptism of their little infant son one Sunday morning. And then suddenly little Ruby, the baby boy's older sister, maybe about Nathaniel's age, maybe a little younger, the Ruby broke out in tears and was inconsolable. Ruby's parents tried to calm her down and repeatedly asked the little girl, what was wrong? Well, finally, little Ruby replied, well, the pastor said that she wants us to be brought up in a Christian home, but I want to stay with you guys. Some of us here today are here because we were raised in Christian homes. Our parents took seriously the vows they made at our baptism to lead us in the way of Jesus. Other, other, others of us may be here despite our upbringing, having found comfort and consolation from God where we did not find it at home. And some may have come without any prior experience of church, with no exposure to Sunday school or to a religious family. There was a void in our life that we just couldn't fill until we found God, or more likely, until God found us. But all of us are here, no matter our families of origin, for one simple reason, the love of God. Our heavenly parent reached out to us even before we were aware of it and brought us in. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, called this prevenient grace or the grace that goes before. And we're followers of a man 
who was not raised in a Christian home, but in a Jewish one, and whose understanding of God and how God works has captured the hearts of multitudes across the millennia. What we share with that good Jewish boy named Jesus is the sign that we wear upon our foreheads, the invisible sign. For like him, we are God's beloved children, God's beloved daughters and sons. We have received the waters of grace. We are baptized. So on this day every year, as I was mentioning, the first Sunday after Epiphany Day, we remember the baptism of Jesus by John, which is the inauguration of Jesus' ministry. He came to the Jordan River, not out of a need to be cleansed from his sins, but to begin the work for which God had been preparing him since the day of his birth, which we just celebrated. As Jesus rose up out of those waters, the Holy Spirit descended upon him with words of blessing and a pronouncement, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Though it may not have been as theatrical as that event, the, the day of our baptism was really no different. I have a picture of that baptismal day, even though I was a baby and I was far too young to have remembered it. I have that picture because my godmother, my Aunt Hattie, Aunt not by blood, but by faith and friendship, she loved to tell me how she carried me down the aisle along with her husband and with my parents and stood there, the four of them and me, to recite the baptismal vows. Without children of their own, Hattie and Gus Nern were as proud as they could be and as wonderful as they could be to me, their whole lives and mine, as deeply loving too. I have always uh, asked our confirmants as we go through that process to ask their parents about their baptisms, who was there, where it was held, any special clothing they wore or gatherings that took place, for such a momentous day should be recalled and cherished in families. Sarah was telling me just yesterday about the baptismal photos and the little dress that her parents held on to for years and years. Doesn't really matter, though, whether we remember the events of that day or not, because it's the beginning of something that's even bigger. Just as Jesus' baptism was the christening of his ministry, so is ours. Just as the Spirit descended upon Jesus to seal God's favor upon him, so did that same Spirit anoint us as God's own child. It doesn't matter if we were never baptized at all. God loves us just as much. And there's still room in the water for any of us at any age or stage of life, if you feel the Spirit leading you to those waters. Of course, we Methodists believe in doing baptism here among the gathered community because we don't see it as a magic potion to protect us from pain or prevent us from having problems in our lives or to keep us from going to hell, as some people still believe. It is rather, in our belief, God's definitive statement that no amount of lostness or confusion we endure, no degree of sin or sloth into which we fall, will ever erase us from God having a home for us and a desire to make that home with God. We are signed, sealed, and delivered by God for a life of abundance and joy. We belong to God, and that, as they say, is that. Sometimes, of course, we overlook that simple truth, don't we? We forget how close God is to us. There was a boy who was walking with his dad along a road in the woods or the country, and they came across a large stone. We have a few of those here in Connecticut. And the boy said to his father, Dad, do you think if I use all of my strength, I can move that rock? And his father answered, yes, if you use all of your strength, I am sure you can. Well, the boy began to push and push the rock, exerting himself as much, much as he could, pushed and pushed and pushed. And you know what? That rock did not budge an inch. So discouraged, he said to his father, you are wrong. I can't do it. 
the father put his arm around, around the boy's shoulder and said, uh, see, the thing, son, is you didn't use all of your strength. You didn't ask me to help you. Imagine this powerful, willing God standing at our side, waiting to help lift those burdens that we have to bear all we think by ourselves. But God will generally not do that unless we ask. God leaves us the freedom to re request assistance or to keep trying to do it all on our own. And yet God is there 24-7. That's the promise God made to us at our baptism, and God does not forget her promises. True, we Christians can be a ragtag and confused people. We are bruised by life and the flame that once shone so brightly, that flame that's within us sometimes burns very low. And yet we have Isaiah's promise that Taryn read for us earlier, that as we walk through the swirling waters, they will not sweep over us. That as we face the fires of life, we will not be burnt up. Do not fear. That is God's most frequent pronouncement in Scripture. Do not fear. I will bring you safely through. And we not only have that promise, we have each other. I will wager, even though Methodists are not supposed to bet, but I will wager that all of us here out there are here in this family of faith because God reached out to us and drew us into it through the love of other people. The grace of God came to us in and through a community of faithful followers, a community of believers who didn't care about our misgivings and mistakes, our age or our status in life, but simply that we are a child of God in need of tender care. As our signboard now outside on the corner says, we don't care if you've been naughty or nice, you are welcome here. Maybe it was a community like this one that drew us in, that made, made seeking justice just as important as pursuing mercy and walking humbly with God. When we're struggling mighty, mightily just to get by and to make sense out of life, God is gentle with us. When terror strikes and the world changes, God remains constant in care. New year same God. Martin Luther, the great reformer, once said that in times of despair and uncertainty, he, re he received strength from touching his forehead and saying to himself, Martin, be calm. Baptismatus sum. Baptismatus sum. I am baptized. He could remember that and take heart. And so can we, even if we don't know a word of Latin. <laughs> Whether or not we can recall our actual baptism, no matter, all we do need to remember is that we are one of God's own children and we belong to God. Granted, we may not always act like we remember that, we let God down, we let one another down, we let ourselves down. But there is forgiveness in the baptismal waters and a chance to begin again. Like every new year, God is always waiting to give us a fresh beginning. So here we are, only eight days into 2023, but it's not too late to make yet another re resolution. <laughs> How about this year, when we're confronted with a large obstacle? How about we remind ourselves, though that we don't need to tackle it alone, but that there is help available to us, if only if we'll just ask for it? What if when others are facing difficulties, others around us, we are the ones who stand by them, ready to help in some important way, and so become family to them? And what if we daily 
were to touch our brow and to say a little Latin phrase, baptismatus sum, or just the English, I am baptized. And so remind ourselves that like Stevie Wonder sang, we are signed, sealed, and delivered into God's unremitting care for the work that Christ would have us do. Doing that might make this a very memorable year indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now let's sing with joy about our baptism. Time to share our joys and our concerns and our prayer requests. All right, I think that's what we have for this morning. Um, of just uh, bow your heads and consider all of these prayers that have been brought before this gathered community, those that have been shared out loud and those that still remain upon our hearts. As we pray to God using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Katie, for leading that <clears throat> portion. And just to uh, share uh, a couple of announcements as well, if, if uh, anybody does have a card that you'd like to sign, that's great. Um, it's the second Sunday of the month. So we have coffee hour right here at church. Uh, downstairs, we're thanking Kathy and Drew for organizing it today and just pop on down to fellow, uh, Trinity Hall and we'll have some good fellowship and something warm to drink. So we, we're doing it on the second Sunday of every month and Drew is organizing it and please don't let her do it by herself. Put your hand up and say, yeah, I'll host one Sunday. It's not hard, right? And uh, we, it's, it's a wonderful thing. A couple of other things. Uh, we There were just a couple of us here yesterday. Uh, so to put a lot of the Christmas decorations away. So almost everything's away except for that old tree over there. So if any 
have a couple of folks after church today could help me carry, take, dismantle it and carry it upstairs. That would be great. Most appreciated. We also have these beautiful poinsettias that have been donated for the Christmas season. If anyone here today would like to take one home, you're welcome to do that. Or if anyone uh, online would like to come by during the week, you can arrange that with Gina uh, for it to grace your home. Also, this is the last Sunday for our basket to collect mittens. Uh, for a donation to Christian Community Action. Uh, Marion, who's been coordinating that project, even though we haven't been here for the past couple of weeks, we're still, this is our last Sunday for it. So please go ahead and uh, if you have any, or if you want to see Marion about getting some to her. And one final thing for me is that uh, Sarah and I will be away the next two Sundays. We're going away this coming Saturday through the following Sunday. So I will be having some guest leaders of worship for the next two Sundays. Next Sunday, Reverend Paul Fleck, uh, who is uh, ordained pastor in our conference and works for uh, uh, immigration ministries in Bath of the Methodist Church. And then in two weeks from today, Reverend Taryn Lepke, who you just heard read our scripture readings, who works in the community for common cause as well. He'll be leading us in worship. So have some wonderful worship leadership while we are away. Any other announcements that anyone wants to bring up to the gathering to let everyone know what's going on. Yes, David. Hi, I'm David Firestone. I've been coming here on and off since about 2003. Um, there, every Sunday after this service ends at about, starting at about 1.30 at Trinity Church on the Green and Chapel and Chapel, there's a drumming circle followed by a service very much like this one. And then uh, they usually feed us. It, sometimes, occasionally, it's hot food. Or so, it's always it's sandwiches and various packed goodies. So it, it, it caters especially to the homeless and to people like me who are members of Fellowship Place. So I'm just running this by you so you know that this happens every Sunday starting at 1.30 and running till about 3. And you can also... they. I don't know if they have it this Sunday, but they've had people like me write down our stories, parts of our life stories. So they're all wonderful people there. And I think if it's the weather is unfavorable, they might have it sometimes in the big entrance of the church. And of course, you can come to me with more questions. Thank you. It's every Sunday, 1.30 to about 3. Thank you. And thank you, David, for reminding us of that really important ministry that is at uh, Trinity Church on the Green. You know, when I was pastor down in Westport, brought the confirm our confirmation class a few times to serve uh, at that, and it's very, very significant. There's both worship and uh, a meal, food for the spirit and food for the body there, every, every, even in cold weather. Anything else from anyone else? If not, then let us offer our gifts and ourselves to God. Choir, come on up. This anthem is entitled, Take Me to the Water. <laughs>
Stand and join in the doxology and then remain standing for our offering prayer. Amen. Let's join together. Fount of every blessing, you pour upon us the abundance of your grace. Bless us and our gifts, that they may be a source of blessing to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Would you please be seated? As I mentioned earlier in the service, for those of you online, if you have a little water handy, <clears throat> that'll, that'll come in handy at a certain point in this service of reaffirmation of the baptismal covenant. <clears throat> Let's join together. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant God declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And so on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow of peace. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their ch children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you had promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, God's glory among all the peoples. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us in righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal God through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Now, normally, on this Sunday, I would invite each of you to come forward as you wished and receive the sign of the cross in the uh, waters of baptism to remember your baptism and to be thankful. However, these are not ordinary times. They continue to be extraordinary in a challenging kind of way. So Sarah and I talked this over and we thought the nicest way would be if anyone who would like to would come forward just to sort of stand there in the front. And I will, uh, the way I flicked a little water on Nathaniel earlier with the branch of evergreen, I will 
sprinkle some water upon you and ask you to remember your baptism and be thankful. So those of you who would like to, and everyone is invited, please come forward at this time. Who's going to be first? Don't be shy. Actually, if you'll come forward here, I, I, then I, I'll, stay, I'll, I'll stay up here. Remember your baptism and be thankful. I'll bring this around here. Remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 So if you'd be seated and the other folks can come forward. And please, you folks at home, do the same to yourself or to one another. Remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 Let's join in the covenant prayer. Holy God, you have washed us in the water of your cleansing power and reminded us again of your unending love for us. As we have renewed our commitment to you, renew your grace in us that we might serve you in joy and extend ourselves to others with the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let's join together in two verses of the Charles Wesley's hymn, Come, Let Us Use the Grace Divine. Please stand. Friends, God has laid a claim upon your life.
By your baptism, you have been marked as God's own forever. In grace, may God watch over you. In peace, may God, Christ, guide you. In strength, may the Holy Spirit lead you forth in love and peace. We go in the presence and the power of the living Christ. Amen. I'm Reverend Vicki Flippin, pastor at First and Summerfield United Methodist Church in New Haven, Connecticut, and we're so glad to have had you in worship today. We would love to stay in touch with you to know who you are and to let you know what we're doing in our community during this time. Um, so we invite you to send an email to fsumcworship at gmail.com, and we can't wait to hear from you. Have a wonderful week, stay safe, be blessed, and let's continue to participate in all that God is doing in the world. Bye.